Ladies and gentlemen, in the field of aviation, the aircraft have to fly for longer distances from country to country or even from the continent to continent. So for these long ranges, the aircrafts need accurate navigation systems to be on their desired path and to reach uh, on time to the destination. These navigation systems can be ground based navigation systems or the space based navigation systems. But when we talk about these long ranges, the aircrafts have to fly over the oceans where the ground reference points or the ground based navigation systems would not work well. So we will need the space based navigation system that will enable the aircrafts to uh, fly on their desired path. So today we will discuss such a system that is the global positioning system that is a satellite based navigation system that uh, comprises of a set of satellites that provides guidance uh, to different vehicles on the earth or that comprises the GPS receivers. We will discuss uh, its uh, principle of operation, its different segments that are user segment, control segment and the uh, space segment. Uh, after that we will discuss uh, uh, briefly about the uses and functions of the GPS. So first of all we will uh, discuss uh, what is the GPS. The GPS global positioning system that is originally a Navstar GPS is a satellite based radio navigation system owned by the United States government and operated by the United States Air Force. It is globally navigation satellite system that provides geolocation and time information to a GPS receiver anywhere on or near the earth where there is an unobstructed line of sight to four or more GPS satellites. Obstacles such as mountains and buildings block the relatively weak GPS signals. The GPS does not require the user to transmit any data or it operates independently of any uh, telephonic or internet reception. Though these technologies can enhance the usefulness of the GPS uh, positioning information the GPS provides critical positioning capabilities to military, civil and commercial users around the world. The United States government created the system that maintains it and makes it freely accessible to everyone in the world with the GPS receiver. The next we will discuss about the history of the GPS. The GPS project was launched in the United States in 1973 to overcome the limitations of the previous navigation systems. Previously, the navigation was uh, uh, the need of navigation was fulfilled by uh, using the stars and uh, the older systems like the magnetic compass. So uh, those systems uh, were having the limitations. So to overcome these limitations, uh, uh, the project was launched in the United States in 1973 that the Pentagon appropriated the funds for that project and the, that department uh, started working and uh, launched its first satellite in 1978. Uh, after a long work, the system uh, was uh, declared fully operational in 1995 uh, that comprised uh, a total of 24 satellites and it was initially developed for use by the United States military and uh, in uh, about uh, 2000 it was uh, declared uh, for use by the civilian. The design of GPS is based partly on similar ground based radio navigation systems such as LORAN or the De DECA nav navigator developed in the early 19th. After that uh, we will have a look on operation or working principle of the GPS. The GPS concept is based on the time and the known position of the GPS specialized satellites. The satellites carry very stable atomic clocks that are synchronized with one another and with the ground clocks. Any drift from true time maintained on the ground is corrected daily. In the same manner, the satellite locations are known with great precision. 
GPS receivers have coax as well, but they are less stable and less precise. GPS satellites continuously transmit data about their current time and position. A GPS re receiver monitors multiple satellites and solves equation that is called the trilateration or triangulation to determine the precise position of the receiver and its deviation from the true time. At a minimum of four satellites must be in the view of the receiver for it to compute four unknown quantities, three position coordinates and a quark deviation from the satellite time. You can see here that the satellites are transmitting the required information and the users like in the ship, vehicle or in the aircraft, uh, the GPS receivers are available. So these are getting information from the satellites. Here is the master station that is updating or uh, controlling these satellites. The GPS system comprises of uh, three segments that are the space segment, the ground segment and the user segment. The US Air Force maintains the space and the control segment and the users uh, receives this information from uh, that is broad broadcasted by the satellites uh, to calculate its three dimensional position like in the form of latitude, longitude and the altitude and the current time. So we will now briefly discuss about the uh, these segments individually. First of all, uh, the control segment. The control segment comprises of the master control station, monitor station and the ground antennas. The master control station is located at the Falcon Air Force Base in Colorado Springs. The master control station is responsible for overall management of remote monitoring and transport. The monitoring station, there are six dedicated monitoring stations. These checks the exact altitude, position, speed, orientation and overall health of the satellites. The monitoring station checks the health of the satellites or the or network twice a day. Then comes the ground antennas. There are four dedicated ground antennas that are used to communicate between the satellites and the master uh, control station. The ground antennas monitor and track satellites from horizon to horizon. They transmit the correction information to the individual satellites also and also communicate with the uh, satellites for command and control purposes. Then comes the space segment. The space segment comprises of the 20, uh, 24 satellites initially but now about 32 satellites are available in the set of these satellites. They are orbiting in the medium earth orbit and also include the payload adopters to the boosters required to launch them into the orbit. These set of orbiting satellites at an altitude of approximately 20,200 kilometers with the orbital radius of approximately uh, 26,600 kilometers each makes two complete orbits each day. That it means it has a orbit of uh, the 12 hours. This was very helpful during development because even with only four satellites, correct alignment means all four are visible from one spot for a few hours each day. For military operations, the ground track repeat can be used to ensure good coverage in the combat zones. And these orbits, uh, you can see here, are powered by the solar panels. They are oriented in such a way that the solar panels always are directed towards the sun and the antennas are directed towards the earth. In the last, uh, the uh, segment is the user segment. The user segment comprises of the uh, GPS receiver device that is composed of the receiver, the antenna, the processor and the display screen. The antenna is tuned at the frequencies that are transmitted by the satellites and the receiver receives that uh, information and the processor processes it. After the processing, it is displayed 
uh, for the uh, user uh, in the form of speed location uh, in the form of uh, latitude longitudes and other uh, navigation information now we will have uh, the look on the functions of the gps the vehicle or uh, the individual or the aircraft that is composed of the gps receiver uh, would be uh, provided with the information about the position and the coordinates that are latitude and the longitude and also it will be provided with the distance or direction between any two waypoints or a position and a waypoint it will also give the travel progress reports for example uh, how much uh, travel uh, has been completed and how much time and uh, the distance uh, is remaining to the de destination it is also used for accurate time measurement in the last we will have uh, a look on the uses of the gps while originally uh, it was a military project that the gps uh, but the gps is considered a dual use technology meaning it has significant military and civil, uh, civilian applications gps become a widely deployed and useful tool for commerce scientific uses tracking and surveillance gps accurate time facility facilitates everyday activities such as gps has become a widely deployed and useful tool for commerce scientific uses tracking and surveillance gps accurate time facilitates everyday activities such as banking mobile phone operations and even the control of power grids by allowing well synchronized hand off switching many civilian applications use one or more of the gps three basic components that are the absolute location relative movement and the time transfer in the uh, different uh, situations emergency situations uh, like uh, in the form of a crash of the aircraft or uh, disaster uh, these uh, the gps uh, uh, is very helpful in the emergency locator beacons or the underwater locator beacons if the gps uh, has been the gps receiver is used then uh, it would be very helpful to locate the uh, site of the uh, accident so we have uh, discussed uh, all the uh, uses and the now we will discuss all the uh, aspects that we have uh, discussed in this lesson uh, first of all we uh, defined the gps uh, that uh, what for what purpose it is used and uh, what is the basic principle of the gps it has uh, uh, different segments like user segment space segment and the uh, uh, control segment and uh, after that we look uh, studied about the uses and functions of the gps thank you very much